Okay, now we're working on the spacers, and what I did is I came in on one side and polished it, or not polished, but surfaced it, and then flipped it over on, on all three pieces, and, um, and now I'm coming back and doing a real accurate surface. So each one of these pieces is exactly the same thickness. And uh, once I get that done, uh, then I'm going to come in and square up the uh, outside edges, which is going to happen next. And I'm going to turn this camera off for the moment, and uh, there you go. Okay, so what, what I've done is I've come in with a uh, router bit, of all things, trimmed down the face of the router bit, got rid of the bearing, because I don't really don't need it here, because here's my bearings, uh, here's my solidity. And now I'm going to run the router bit across this edge here because I didn't have a, uh, a radius edge uh, mill bit. So uh, the router bit seems to work just fine. And since it's just such a small radius, I don't think I'm ever going to use it for, uh, for wood. So uh, basically set this thing up, come in, and cut going with the cut which makes it a nice clean finish and so I'm going real slow and just taking my time and uh, make the cut we're almost there zip pull the piece out take my and re-index my bit back to back to zero and here's my cut so it's a nice cut, been fairly clean. Okay, turn it around. And uh, let me take this back a little further so I don't catch my fingers. Clean off the surface. Bring this in. Until it just starts to grab. And then what I do is index it to this edge right here. And I'm just going to use my fingernail because that work, seems to work just fine. And get it so that it's perfectly flat with that edge and then the the router bit is a, a, adjusted to that edge there and all I have to do is come back in now first before I do that because I have a fairly old uh, um, vise notice how when I clamp my vise down my uh, my keepers uh, start getting all slidey so come in and whack that until these tighten up there we go and then tighten it a little bit more make sure I'm still snug. Okay, and then we're ready to come on in and take that edge off. Now since this is really just a beauty cut, I don't have to worry too much about, you know, accuracy or anything like that. All I have to worry about is have it be a really clean cut. And that means go slow and take it easy and cut with the with the direction of travel and we're almost there just a little bit more there we go take that a little further break my piece loose pop it out and uh, and we've got a nice radius all the way around and this basically is a uh, is a spacer for the uh, for the bearing blocks to get the, the bearings to sit up high enough uh, okay so uh, that was done now we put the long piece in this one's for the uh, for the motor mount and they, all of these are the same thickness I mean exactly the same thickness and this is that that really counted so we, I had to be very careful there and so being the same thickness everybody moves up by you know however many thousands that is oops gotta slide that in get this a little further back get it right up to the edge and you'll notice this one already has a bit of a radius to it but it was kind of my test piece there we go snug her down and uh, there you know as soon as uh, what happens is, is as this uh, as this vice wears over the years, and this is probably, you know, I'm guessing 50 years old, the, uh, the, the runners uh, wear a little bit, and when you clamp down, this moves up, 
and the whole thing that just kind of kicks up and moves out of the way but you know it's just one of those things with old equipment just like this old mill I think it was built in the, like the mid 60s you just have to take a little bit of extra time to make sure everything's in place okay one more cut well not one more we got uh, four more cuts and we will uh, check back in with you in a little while in now on the back side of the bearing block and just surfacing that off and notice right here there's a little dimple well that's where the um, that's where the uh, bearing hole or the shaft hole is going to come through as soon as we kind of clean this thing up we're just going to quickly go back and forth and as soon as we get all the way over then we go ahead and rotate it over a little bit run it back I'm going to pull back so the chips don't hit my uh, lens and you can see the hole right in the in the back now and pretty much I don't think I need to go too much further than that last little bit and there we go one cleaned up piece of material Give it a quick blow. And you can see that that surface is just about perfect. All right, and we're going to do the other one, and then uh, we'll take it over there and uh, assemble this thing. Well, kind of assemble. Okay, everything is just sitting here, but it is in place, and we are hooked up to the bearings now, and we'll get a decent spin out of this thing. Yeah, this thing should spin for, you know, it should spin fairly easily. Uh, I think what we may have to do is come in. I noticed that this shaft here needs to stick out a little further in order to hook something up to it. And then, uh, so that means that everything is going to move in just a bit. But we got our blocks, we got our height, which means that uh, everything is, is even on both sides here. Let's give it a good spin just for fun. And uh, so I think I think we're pretty well set to go here as far as what's going on. Now, the motor mount's in, although it's, you know, it isn't, it hasn't got a bolt on it or anything like that yet. But, you know, all of that's coming. So I think we're, we've gone to the next step and uh, I'm happy. So a really cool trick I saw just the other day on, on YouTube, uh, and I get more things on YouTube. Uh, anyhow, uh, a way to center, um, uh, get a really good exact center on my rotary table is to um, cut a slight taper on a slug. And I've got just a slight taper on that. I don't know if you can see it or not. And the taper fits inside of the hole of the, um, of the rotary table. And the rotary table is just pretty much just kind of hanging loose. And you just keep going down and wiggling. Oops, I'm all the way down need to come up a little bit more and just keep wiggling it until it finds its own center and there's center and that's it and uh, I tested it and it is accurate to within a thousandth so that makes uh, that makes finding center on the table a lot easier than you know getting a coaxial hooking the whole thing up and setting it up and then uh, banging things around until they fit so I am dead center. Put my wrench away. Pull my my um, quill up, and then uh, go ahead and just take this part out. And I'm dead center on that. And all I have to do now is, uh, and I I dedicated a. Uh, 
uh, a collet just for that one piece. So these two never separate from one another. It makes it a lot easier. So okay, so now what I'll do is drop this in, find a general center, and then I'll come in with the coax and and have to move this around until I find absolute center. And we're going to click center into the DRO. Drop that on there and uh, oh actually I need to uh, get myself a little spacer under there. But that's no problem. And that's pretty close. Couple of uh, oh you know what let's let's rotate this thing around so we've got um, long T nut slots to tie into, and then we just come in and drop this in place. set of T nuts or okay and I've set it up so that uh, when I get ready to cut the taper on each side I can just take one clamp off and cut the taper and uh, I'll be okay. So now I'm just going to finger tighten them because I know this is not uh, not uh, in place. I'm just really just putting this drill bit in just to give myself a general center. God, it looks like I'm on the money. That doesn't happen that often. Take it back out and drop my coax in. And then I can get um, get a more accurate center. it make sure we're fairly close my gosh we're about five thousandths just as we're sitting that's great okay slow our speed down a little bit Turn our uh, turn our uh, mill on, and then basically we're just going to tap this just slightly. In fact, since we're so close, let's tighten things up just a little bit. Sometimes when I'm way off, I leave it fairly loose so I can bang it around a lot. But this is this is incredible. Okay, so now we want to go that way. And now we want to go You know, you just want to get it that accurate. And I ask myself, what for? So what do we got? Two and a half, three thousandths there. That's good enough. Let's tighten her up and then check it one more time.
still two and a half, three. We will stop there and uh, put a, a bit in and uh, go ahead and start cutting. Okay, we dialed in our center and then we pulled the table back this way so that we got a little clearance. And now we're going to kind of just pretty much work our way back in to the, um, the piece. Uh, chewing off uh, all the excess that we don't want or need. And let's get go ahead and do the other side and then we can put this camera down. There you go. So we're just going to kind of keep working our way in until we get so that this is a complete um, a complete um, half circle. Okay, we've got our um, our radius cut, and now we're kind of coming in and smoothing the edges to fit the radius. And once I pull this bit up, you'll be able to see what I'm what I'm doing. Okay, we got that cut. And that doesn't look that good. So I think what we're going to do is take it back in just a tad. The bit spinning the opposite direction always leaves a really nice finish. You may or may not be able to see it from this angle, but as soon as we take this off here, you'll see that the that the piece is slightly tapered from the top to the bottom. So that's going to give it a nice finish. And uh, we ran into, we got just a little bit of scrap left on the edge there, but we can pretty much take that out with a file. Okay, so that gives us one, and now we got to bring the other one in, and the other one looks basically is back to square, so uh, we've got to re center the hole, uh, you know, find exact center, and then cut our radius. And then once we've cut the radius, we're going to cut our our two tapers to give us this nice smooth look.